see over there? Uh-huh. I was in a line next to Doreen, the captain. Uh-huh. They're very committed lesbians, and they're on their way to Marietta, Georgia, which is practically on our way. Not exactly. After today's game, these girls are gonna have a basement party. And guess who's invited? Sure you are. Nuh-uh. Us. My beautiful suffix, today I want to put you guys into a new movie called Drive Away Dolls. Welcome to El Conquistador. Yeah, hiya. Do you have a room for two right away? Oh, uh, we do have one available, yes. How many nights? Well, tonight, and then we'll play it by ear. Did you take the rainbow card? Uh, I'm sure we do. Yes, actually, that's just a uh, Visa specialty card. Yeah, but they give a percentage of each purchase to gay, lesbian, bi, transgender charities. You do that right. The film tells the story of Marion, an uptight lesbian in 1999, and her best friend, Jamie. This is great, but how Ladies, are we enjoying a beverage this evening? Yes. Uh, can we get some champagne, please? Like a really, really good one? Of course. Won't you have to pay for the card at some point? Theoretically. In the first five minutes of the film, we find out that Jamie and Suki are soon to be ex-girlfriends, as Jamie hasn't been faithful. God, look at that Hi, Suki. Don't put that woman in front of a crowd with a microphone. Well, she likes to entertain. Here. And then she gets this reinforcement. Do you know who she's I don't know that she's seeing anyone. She's seeing you, of course. Jamie is an outgoing and eccentric lesbian. And true to be told, I don't love that her first introduction as a character is her cheating. Nor that her upset partner is treated as a laughing matter. That said, Jamie was one of the aspects that made this film so enjoyable. Put a meter on her pussy, we could all retire! That is not a public receptacle! Somebody's gonna get hit. Oh. Hi, Suki! Oh. Oh. I've had it with love. I know bards and troubadours are high on it, but I don't believe it's relevant to the modern 20th, soon to be 21st century lesbian. They set off on a road trip to Florida, Marion to visit some family, and Jamie to get away from her abusive and toxic ex-girlfriend, Zuki. I've been unhappy. We can fix that. We'll have you run around in no time. That's why we take this trip together, honey babe. We get our shit together, together. See, I was gonna take some time off. Now, you can come with me, and we can go to Tallahassee and Bird. Drives the plot forward, and her ability to make jokes kept me laughing all throughout the film. What's your project? Loosening you up so we can get you late, sugar sweet. How long's it been? Weeks? Months? Oh my God, Marion, don't tell me it's been years. H how many years? Who was it? You've had sex since what's her name, haven't you? Oh my God, Donna? But things take a turn when they discover a mysterious suitcase in their truck. Whoever sliced that head off knows who we are. This might tell us who they are, so we won't be at a disadvantage. The police can find out and the police can protect us. Protect us? They're not the Secret Service and we're not Chelsea Clinton. What do we lose by looking? Marion is Jamie's best friend. And despite being super close, the two characters are total opposites. Different from Jamie, Marianne is very shy, very put together, and very often follows the rules. This car trip is a perfect opportunity for her to loosen up and have sex. Rotate right. <clears throat> can't, can't we, um, see, actually, we're just friends. Jamie is on a mission to get Marion laid, and this is how they end up falling for each other in the first place. I have heard of a more soulful sex where you have a nice dinner and conversation first so it all comes out of someplace deeper. You mean, you want to sleep with me? You have got to have a good steamy <laughs> Something I decided last night while I was lying in bed before I started marrying. And I figure if it's important to me, I should take care of it myself. Their chemistry is beautiful, awkward, and funny, and their dynamic is very gay all throughout the film. Especially since with you, it's got to be with somebody who cares for you. Am I right? Can't just be a finger jiggling your clit and adios. Thank you. My pleasure, madame. Yes, please. 
One of my favorite things about the film is how it portrays two best friends taking their relationship to the next level. Is it a good idea for us to have sex? I mean, we're good friends and maybe it's not supposed to be more than that. Maybe we shouldn't risk ruining it. Look, you can always find reasons to not have sex. And if you think about them too much, guess what? You never have sex. Exactly. Ladies, have we decided? Don't rush us, buddy. First, we'll dance. Moving from friendship to romance and ultimately choosing to be just with each other. You girls are cute. My friends and me are having a little basement party later. Do you want to join? Not tonight. The plot twists and turns in such unexpected and ridiculous ways that we can't help but find humor in it. Sure, it is not believable. None of the events would ever happen in real life, as they do in the film. But that's the joy of it. It is simply and ridiculously funny. Damn, Marin. Landing yourself in prison is a very hopeful sign for you. I think it was jail, not prison. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you ain't told me how you come to be in jail. It wasn't hell-raising. Sorry to disappoint. A policeman didn't like my tone. Despite the film's consistently light-hearted tone, it explores significant and fundamental political themes. One notable example is the police scene, where Marianne is taken to jail, simply because the police officer doesn't like her tone of voice. All these funny little creatures that you probably notice walking around on two legs, we call them human beings, gotta understand what makes them tick and your whole social situation. You know what that means? I know what social situation means. Okay, good. The whole thing with a cop is, and you should remember this for future reference, when you're in a social situation with a cop, there ain't no social situation. I don't want to give away any major spoilers or say what is inside the suitcase, but trust me, it is wild. You probably would not believe me even if I tried to tell you. The craziest thing is that the mob start chasing them for the suitcase as if it is packed with a ton of coke. Oh, come on. Don't be mad. Last night was beautiful, but you fell asleep and I didn't get my turn on the water slide, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Everyone relax. Stay calm. We're here for two items. Whoa, she's naked. All right, no big deal. We're here for two items? Yes. This, please and thank you. There is a nice sprinkling of A-list cameos, including Coleman Domingo, Pedro Pascal, Matt Damon, and Miley Cyrus, who I wish have been a bit more in the action. I'm gonna clean up. Wanna join me? I have come across with a few negative reviews on TikTok and Instagram. However, for me, the film stands out as the unapologetically queer masterpiece that we all need. Also, if you are a fan of Margaret Qualley, she portrayed it, a queer character in the 2017 film Novitiate. And he tells the story of a young woman training to become a nun, who struggles with issues of faith, sexuality, and the changing church. I seek something more. This is the movie in case you want to check it out. I hope you enjoyed today's video and thank you so much for watching.